Hi, my name's Matt. Welcome to Pony Power. Um, today it's a bit more theory. Uh, we're going to go out. Uh, yeah, going to go on about um, testing roundness or trueness of crankshafts. Um, this operation can be done on a lathe. If you don't have a lathe, um, there are other ways you can do it, um, and this is one of the other ways um, that a lot of manuals, like service manuals, and all that, show you how to do it. So basically, what we've got here is we've got two V blocks. Um, and we've got an engineering surface or an engineering block. It's basically just a block of granite. The reason why you want to use a block of granite and not just your workbench is because this is stupidly flat. And um, the reason why they're made out of granite and not steel, you can get cast iron ones, but they're more likely to warp and bend over a bigger surface area um, due to thermal expansion and basically how hot or cold it is. Um, so on a different day, it'll not be as true as it could be where granite is very um, resilient resistant to that its thermal expansion is practically bugger all so that's why you have granite blocks anyway so we've got a magnetic base which obviously isn't going to stick to the granite but it's got a nice flat surface it shouldn't really move anywhere we're not really putting any um, stress on it or anything else like that then we've got um, a dial test indicator or a DTI or just a dial indicator and we have, I have a crankshaft that I split apart and um, remove the con rod and all those things, check the bearings and whatnot. Anyway, the thing's scrap and I pressed it together, back together, incorrectly. It's got a stupidly, a stupid amount of walk out, i.e. this side to this side, out of alignment. Um, but I just wanted to, it is ridiculous. If you ever, well you are a crank like this, the bike will wreck itself before this happens. Um, but I'm just trying to show you what you can see. So, on our test indicator here, it doesn't matter if the needle's at zero, you can turn the dial and set it to zero, um, but there's no, there's really no need. Um, you're basically looking for the fluctuation. Now it should really hardly move, it should hardly walk um, on, a, on a true crank. But with this, if you can see, you can see the step out. So we're starting there, that's the highest point, or there, that's the lowest point. And as we turn it, it's a bit hard because this is really out of round. But you can see there how much it fluctuates. And what I'm riding on is I'm riding on the bearing surface. Um, and you're meant to do each side. There's no point doing each side, this is just a demonstration. So if you are worried about trueness or you know you really want to get into engines and all the rest of it, this kind of kit, the lathe over there really does help. <laughs> you just stick it between centres and away you go. Um, but this, you know, not everyone has a lathe. Um, you know, they're expensive pieces of kit. And if you're doing it just to kind of do this thing, if you're not going to start turning your own gears or you're going to start turning your own shafts, boring stuff like that, and you're not really interested in machining, then it's a bit expensive to go out of it. So this is what you can do. This is a setup. Um, you don't have to use a granite block, but try and find something that's as flat as can be. You can use mirrors. Mirrors are, by design, incredibly flat because if it's warped in any way, then the image is warped. So you can always tell how flat a mirror is. Um, but then back to this, you can just see how much walk out there is. There's a stupid amount. You'd never see this, and you can see there's just a pattern where it wobbles out. And this gives you a good indication of how warped one is to the other. You can move it along and put it on another surface um, which is the oil seal surface just afterwards and you get the same thing, you get a massive run out like that. There are, it's not even on it, that's why we're getting a weird reading. Um, you get this up and you get the base, you get a seesaw motion as it's going to the left to the right. So that you would say, is, you could say is right and then it swings to the left and then right again. Um, and then if we go to the other side, I'll try and sort all this out because this is not a very good indicator of mag base. I was going to dig my big one out but um, I can't seem to find it like everything that I ever do. You go to the other side, and um, turn it again. You start getting a similar reading. 
don't know if you can see that on the camera, you should be able to. There's not too much glare, but you get this swing out. It is rubbing it in this instance because this is the end that's really out. There's more of a shaft on this side. Um, you know, I am rubbing here and all that. If I was going to do this properly, I'd do a proper, proper setup. I'd get my proper bit um, base out. That's another thing you've got to be careful with these things, and that's why, again, you could use with it. It's good to have a very stable surface. Because if I just lock that onto this shaft, any tapping, and that's the reading you get. Let's see if we can get you in to see that. So if you just tap stuff, you get it's just shifting everything. So you've got to have this is a nice heavy base. Um, obviously, I'm knocking around and all the rest of it. But as you're turning, you should never really do it on a taper. But again, there's your run out. This is the further away you become from centre line of way testing, um, the worse it's going to be. And uh, basically, that's it. But that's how the te that's how you test for run out. The best thing between when you do it in a lathe between centres is that the two blocks are centred. It's not the end of the world. You can get a good sense of it if you have something. Try and get you something flat. Um, she was a punch. So if you've got something, and make sure all your surfaces are clean. You've got something that is um, that is round. Get in here. Have you got something that is pretty round. can sense a lot of editing coming on. You can kind of see if it's hard to keep in the same spot. But you can see the fluctuations there. And to be quite honest, I don't expect something like this, like a, a, um, a punch like that, to be that round, to be quite honest. But there you go, so that's just a simple, um, a quick introduction, if anything, into um, measuring the roundness of a crank. And if you can see, it's hard to see on the camera, um, one, it's cocked out, which does happen with crankshafts. They cock out from one, so these aren't exactly parallel, um, which is giving it out round, but it's also, it's very hard to see with the camera, but it's out of round that way. The holes, these holes, I know it's perspective and all the rest of it, but you can see that it kind of kicks out, or if you look there, it's flat there, and then it goes lopsided. It, um, you can see that one isn't in line with the other. Anyway, that's a bit of uh, a bit more theory for you, and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Right, back to where we were. I've got this uh, small 125 crank, and um, I've set everything up in a bit of a better way. Uh, and I hope you can see that needle. It looks like you can. Right, so what you've got to do is be very delicate. Um, as you can see, as we slowly turn this, you can see it wobble ever so slightly. And it goes back again. So if you get a constant reading like that, you can see how much run out there is. Now you've got to make sure the crank's very clean and the V-box are very clean. But you can see there's a tiny amount of run out, which is 0 0.0, God, I'd say it's two thousandths of a millimeter. It's absolutely bugger, bugger all. Which to be quite honest, is pretty good. That's tiny, 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 tiny amount. So that's about 25, 25 microns out. You get that swing either side. And basically that's what a, um, 
a good crank, a good crank looks like. I know we had our demonstration that was completely miles out and um, yeah, so there you go, that's uh, a good example of a, of a, of a good one. Alright, see you in a bit.